Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for joining me today. We're going through anxiety, how to cure anxiety right here, right now with me. So if you've experienced anxiety, you struggle with it, you used to, or you currently do, or you have a friend or a family member or a partner or a loved one who struggles with it, this is going to be really powerful. So before I get into it, I'm just going to ask a small favor. If you can comment down below, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, like the video, it helps tremendously more than you know. The bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests get. So if you can subscribe, leave a review, five-star review, depending where you're watching this, and subscribe, that truly means so much to me. Now with that ask out of the way, let's get into it. We're going through anxiety. So just for context, guys, I got diagnosed with Asperger's, ADHD, and anxiety, experienced depression, had suicide throughout my family, suicide attempts, and I've been in the mental health space for about 10 years now. So very curious, very interested, and very passionate about the topic of anxiety. So I'm, this is not medical advice, so take this uh, advice or opinion as a grain of salt. This has just worked well, incredibly well for myself and for my clients and loved ones that I've been able to help with this. So first things first, remember this rule. Whatever you judge yourself for, you will continue to do. Have you noticed that people that say sorry a lot keep doing the things that they keep saying sorry for? Why is that? Energy expands with what we put focus onto. Where focus goes, energy flows. Whatever you focus on will expand and you attract more of it into your life. So if I say don't look for the yellow bus, you're looking for the yellow bus, you're thinking of the, the yellow bus and you're attracting yellow buses. So if you judge yourself and you have a negative association with the word anxiety and you think it's a bad thing, guess what? You're going to keep experiencing it. So I want you to just remember that anxiety is normal and natural. It's very normal. We experience it. It's a part of the human experience. A simple, simple shift, which will help you tremendously. Take away the title or the diagnostics or the definition that you quote have anxiety it's not something you have you're not you don't i wouldn't cut you open and see like a user's manual inside of you saying you're this is sarah brown born in australia on in brisbane and you have anxiety this is who you are you don't have that it's not how we work it's a part of the human experience. We have a sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for our fight or flight. The amygdala that's in our brain, it's always looking for danger. It's fight or flight. It's normal. It's allowed us to evolve for millions and millions of years. Say you're in a cave or say you're just sitting down eating and a tiger walks past. How do you think you're going to feel? You're going to feel anxious. You're sympathetic nervous system will activate, blood will go to the extremities, your heart rate would race and you look for a way to survive, fight, hide or sorry, fight, fight, flight, hide or um, or do whatever you need to do to survive. That's a part of being human. You could literally swap out the word anxiety for scared. That's all it is. It's when you feel scared. So it's very normal. So please stop judging yourself for it. So that's just the kind of context and framing I want to have around it. Because if you judge yourself for it and you think it's bad, then you feel anxious because it's a natural form of anxiety, which I'll get into soon. Then you judge yourself for doing it. You beat yourself up more and you get more anxious again. And it's a very fucking vicious cycle to get into. So please remove any judgment and switch out the words I have to I experience because we all do and you're going to. So I kind of a bit of a clickbait for this podcast of I can cure anxiety. You can't cure it because it's a normal fucking experience. It's like saying cure happiness, cure sadness, cure whatever. You can't cure it. It's a normal experience that we're going to have as human beings. So please let that one sink in. Now, with that being said, I break mine down to three types of anxiety and I'm going to go through how to work through it. So first things first is natural anxiety. Now that's the kind of definition I was just talking about where it's normal. It's part of the human experience. Let's use an example. You're driving your car and a car has taken the wrong turn and a car is driving directly towards you. <clears throat> how do you think you're going to feel? You're going to feel anxious. And guess what? Do you want to feel anxious? In that moment, yes, you do. Do you want to be over, like have a panic attack and breakdown? No, but you want a natural level of it so you can activate and think fast and make fast decisions and you want things to be on. You want that. Imagine this, you're driving and the car's about to hit you and you go, hmm, that's interesting. Look, there's a car coming towards me. Maybe I should think of maybe doing something about it. 
you die. <laughs> you need to react. You're like, holy shit, bang, let's get out of here. You want your survival instincts to kick in because that's what it's there for. So I call that quote natural anxiety. So when it pops up when it's meant to, if you're driving, like say you're, I don't know, you're going for a walk in nature and there's literally a grizzly bear, you probably want to, or depending on your strategy, if it's like he sees you or he or she sees you and he's coming to get you, it's like, and you've got to either fight, run or hide, you've got to do something, you probably want to switch on and, and do what you need to do. It's a normal function. So that's what I call, quote, natural anxiety. Let's put that into category one. Category two, this is what most people experience. So I call it unnatural anxiety. So this is where you have things that you haven't healed through. You're in your head a lot. Your nervous system is fucking fried because we live off stimulus. We live on social media. We live at work. We think about our problems. We have all these bills, all these challenges, and we're constantly stimulated and our nervous system is deregulated as shit. So we constantly live in a fight or flight sense. That's what I call an unnatural anxiety. How do you solve that? It's a good question. So you want to do things that help you to regulate your nervous system. There's tons of things. I'm going to give you some examples and I'll use the, I'll give you the ones that I use. But number one is breath. That's the first thing I go to, breath. If you haven't gone down the rabbit hole of breath work, if you haven't looked into Wim Hof style of breathing, it's so powerful. So please look into that. But I do breath work because it calms our nervous system. Picture someone having a panic attack. How are they breathing? Deep, slow, and controlled? Absolutely not. It's <laughs> and it's normally through their mouth as well. It's literally activating that fight or flight. It's activating that sympathetic nervous system versus we go deep through the nose. I feel so much better just doing one. So breath is a beautiful way. Journaling, maybe you've got a lot of stuff you haven't processed yet. So you want to process that. It's a bit overwhelming. You're quite stressed. You want to take care of it. So maybe you want to do some journaling. Meditation. Let your thoughts breathe. Go do some exercise. Do, do some yoga. Do some grounding. Stand barefoot on the fucking ground of this beautiful planet that we live on. There's so many ways to, do, um, to calm your nervous system and to become neutral. But you want to find your ways. I love breath work. I love meditation. I don't do too much journaling. I'm not a big journaler. That's not my style. But I love meditation. But find things to balance out the high stimulus of the life we live in. Think about the lives we live these days with these phones. Like there's phones everywhere. You're constantly stimulated. You're driving. You're in traffic. You've got TV. You've got friends' parties. You've got friends' birthdays. You've got bills. You've got things to do at work. Like you're constantly stimulated. How often do we take the time to actually recharge and rebalance that stimulation? Not very often for most people. That's why we're constantly in this like perpetual state of fight or flight because our nervous system is so deregulated. So there's a ton ton in what I just said, but find your ways. Again, I love breath work. I do it daily. I do meditation daily. I don't journal very often. Uh, I stretch. I don't do yoga, but I do stretching. Um, I exercise every single day. Uh, I spend time with my partner. I sleep with my phone in another room, so all in our ensuite in the bathroom. So I have my phone away from me. So my phone, I literally can't touch it and it's that addiction. Uh, I read every single day. So I have times to allow me to disconnect from all the high frequency activities that we do throughout the day. Now, the thir- so, that's, so there's, un- there's natural anxiety, there's unnatural anxiety. Now, what's the third type? For me, the third type is triggered anxiety. You have trauma, which we all do. We all have wounds and things we haven't integrated and learned to love about ourselves. Darkness, shadow work, inner child work, call it what you want, unhealed stuff. Now, there's a great book. It's actually behind me if you're watching the video. It's called You're Not Broken by Dr. Sarah Woodhouse. And she, she talks about three things. There's trauma, traumatic reactions, and triggers. Now, a trauma or a traumatic event is something that we go through that was painful or perceived threat. So perceived threat, feeling scared, it's, it's, it's the sympathetic nervous system again. It's fight or flight. Let's use an example. You get attacked by a dog when you're three years old. Guess how you're going to feel? You're going to feel anxious and scared as shit because it's danger. It's threat. It's perceived threat. In that case, it's literally threat. It's threatening. So that was the traumatic event. Now, the traumatic reaction is the coping mechanism that we use to handle the traumatic event. So the dog comes and attacks you and you feel anxious because you're looking for a way to survive. Beautiful. Now, that becomes a traumatic, uh, a trauma for that person. Now, a trigger 
is what triggers that past event that you haven't healed through yet. So you're 20 years old and you see a dog and it scares the shit out of you and you, f- you feel anxious again. Because when we get triggered, we, re- we, we regress back to the younger version of ourselves when that traumatic event happens. You literally become that younger version of yourself. So again, you see a dog, now you're 20, 30, 40 years old and you haven't healed through this wound yet. You see a dog, you get triggered, you feel anxious because you're becoming that younger version of yourself. So when I say triggered anxiety, it's triggered from past wounds you haven't healed through. Now, triggered and the unnatural anxiety, they do overlap. So what I just said earlier about unnatural anxiety and what I just said about triggered anxiety, they can definitely overlap each other with what I've just said. So that's how I see anxiety. And how do you, how do you solve that one? Go and do the inner work. Go do your healing work. There's so many ways to heal. I do healing with my clients. I help them with their traumas, their wounds, their anxiety, their depression, their overwhelm, their lack of clarity, their self-worth, self-sabotage, imposter syndrome, limiting beliefs, etc. I'm someone that does that. Am I the only person? Fuck no. There's thousands of people out there. Find someone that you really resonate with, that you align with, that you connect with, you feel safe with, and go do the inner healing work. Go do the work. There's coaches like what I do, like NLP coaches, my mindset coaches and people that sort of have a level of awareness and consciousness that can actually see things you can't see to do things you can't do to help you in a way that you can't help yourself. So you have someone help you through that sense, like a coach like myself. There's also therapists. There's also counselors. There's also plant medicine. There's also spiritual healers. There's also Reiki healers. There's also sound healing. There's so many ways to heal. You've got to find your... I, I recommend try them all. I've tried... Oh, probably like four or five of the ones I just said, therapy, counseling, um, coaching, plant medicine. I've just signed up with the energy healer at the time of the recording this podcast. So I've, I've done a lot of plant medicine. I love plant medicine. Um, breath work, breath work, depending on the style of breath work, I obviously mentioned about slowing your breath down, like that style of breath work on this podcast, but there's literally healing styles of breath work, like rebirthing. If you understand that term, if you're in that world, there is a lot of styles to heal. I've done the breathwork one. That was beautiful. I had some beautiful healing experiences doing breathwork. You just got to find your way, guys. Find your way to heal. If you like my vibe, you like my energy, you want to connect with me, maybe I'm, I'm, a good, I'm a good place to start. But that is how I deal with anxiety. That's how I, quote, cure it. One, you can't cure it because it's a natural part of the sympathetic nervous system. But you can cure those unnatural and those triggered ones by doing the work, by meditating, by journaling, by practicing stillness, by healing through your past, by controlling your breath. You can do that. Again, you're going to feel it naturally from time to time because it's part of us human beings. Stop judging yourself because it perpetuates that feeling. It's a bad thing. Then you feel anxious because it, because you almost got hit by a car, which is normal, but then you judge yourself for feeling anxious because it's a bad thing, which makes you feel more anxious and the fucking cycle gets into it. It's very unhealthy. So, Make sure, appreciate, and recognize that it's actually very normal. There's the unnatural and then there's the triggered version of it. And I've given you some strategies of how to work through that. I hope you got value from this. If you did, guys, please, please like and comment and subscribe. It helps me more than you recognize and more than you know. If you got value from this, send it with a friend, share it with a friend uh, to share the love around and to impact more people. And if you're looking for a coach and you're looking for an opportunity to heal, grow, become the best version of you, and you like my energy, you like what I'm about, then in the description below, there's a link for a free strategy call. It's with me personally. I book out every single week. So make sure you book in quickly. Uh, It's with me and it's only for people that want to grow. So please don't book in if you're not ready and willing to do the work because I can drag a horse to water. You can't make a drink. If you're not willing to take a drink or ready to take a drink, please don't book in. I appreciate you. I love you so much. Thank you for supporting my journey. Have a beautiful day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.